Great. You ready? All right. It's good to be with you all uh, this evening. Dobre biti sa svama svima ovde oveče. I'm very privileged and honored that I can be here and share with you. Ovo privilegije i čast mogu da dođem ovde da budem sa vama i da podelim sa vama. I'm especially happy that I could come and visit my sister Wendy, who's been with you all for the past, I guess, nine, ten months. Najsrećniji sam zbog toga što sam mogao da posetim svoju sestru Wendy ovde, koja je bila ovde već devet meseci sa vama. It makes me happy to meet some of the people that she is here with. I drago mi je da imam priliku da upoznam ljude koji su, sa kojima je se ona druži uopšte. So thank you for... Receiving her and loving her, taking care of her. Hvala vam što ste primili, što je volite, što se brinete za nju. It means a lot to me and I'm happy that she's in a place where there are people that love the Lord, you know. To je srećan sam zbog toga i drago mi je da je na mjestu gde, što se druži sa ljudima koji vole gospoda. I live in Kyrgyzstan. Ja živim u Kyrgyzstanu. We've lived there for the past six years. Tamo živim sa porodicom već šest godina. Before that we lived in Ukraine. We moved from Ukraine to Kyrgyzstan, my wife and I. Prije toga smo živjeli u Ukrajini, ja i moja žena. I'm married to one woman. I have one wife. Imam jednu ženu, oženjen sam jednom ženom. Although I live in a Muslim country, I only have one wife. Iako živim u muslimanskoj zemlji, imam samo jednu ženu. And we have five children. Imamo petoro dece. And they all are very young. I oni su svi jako mali. The oldest is five years old. A najstariji ima pet godina. So they go from five all the way down to two, uh, one right now. Yeah. Od pet do dve godine, otprilike jedan. So I'm a very blessed man. I have a, a wonderful wife and wonderful children. And I live in a wonderful country too, Kyrgyzstan. The Lord is doing a lot of neat uh, things in that country. How many of you have ever heard of Kyrgyzstan or know anything about Kyrgyzstan. Koliko od vas je kad čulo za Kyrgyzstan ili je... Okay, so some of you, that's great. It's, it's over, you know, by China. To je ovaj kod Kine. Danny is scared of me, that's why. Plašim se njega, zato sam se pomerio. To je pored Kine. Did you translate it the right way? Okay. Next to China's word. <laughs> All right, um... And it's north of Tajikistan and Afghanistan. I severno je od Tajikistana i Afganistana. And as I mentioned before, you know, there it's mostly Muslim. Ninety, well, eighty-five to ninety percent of the population are Muslim. Oko osamdeset posto je ovaj populacija muslimanska, znači muslimanska zemlja. But you know what? They're very open to the gospel. I ali vrlo su otvoreni evanđelju. I find it very interesting the uh, different places I've been to and different people I've talked to that you know in the Muslim world in general is very open to the gospel. I to me uvek iznenađuje je da jednostavno muslimanski svet je uvek uh, otvoren evanđelju. Sometimes we look at the countries that these people live in. I nekad pogledamo ove zemlje gde ljudi žive. And uh, it seems like they're very closed, right? A lot of these countries have very restricting laws. I te onako zemlje su prilično blizu, onako imaju te vrlo rigorozne zakone. But I find at the, the local level with the people that live there that they're very open. Ali interesantno je to da kada upoznate ljude uopšte negde vidite da su vrlo otvoreni evanđelji. And I count it a privilege to live in a place like Kyrgyzstan that I can share with people the, you know, the gospel of Jesus Christ. I meni je privilegija da živim u zemlji kao Kyrgyzstanu i da delim evanđelji Isusa Hrista sa ljudima koji tamo žive. So, you know, that's just a little bit about myself, I guess. To je tako da to je nešto malo o meni. It's been great to, I was able to walk around your city a little bit today. You have a very beautiful city here. Uspio sam se malo šetati danas po Subotici i predivanji grad. And the people that I've been able to meet, it's been very nice meeting the people here. Ljudi s kojima sam se upoznao i su su predivno super i upoznati ljudima. Hopefully I'll be able to come visit again maybe with my wife. Nadam se da ću opet doći možda jednog dana sa ženom. I don't know, Lord willing. Ako Bog da. Daj Bog. So... Let's look at 2 Corinthians chapter 5. Ajde da pogledamo u drugim Korinćanima, peto poglavlje. I would like to just share with you things that I'm sure you already know, many of you. Htio bih podijeliti nešto sa vama što vjerujem da već znate. But um, it's something that 
I've seen happening in our church in Bishkek a lot lately. I to je nešto što vidim da se dosta događa u našoj crkvi u Biškek, u glavnom gradu Kegistana. So, yeah, let's look at chapter 5 verse 17. Peto poglavlje, znači druge Korinćane ima peto poglavlje, 17. stih. 17, yeah, just... okay. Stoga, ako je kog Kristu, na ovaj tvar staro prođe, kle sve novo postate. Yeah, so if anyone is in Christ, kaže stoga ako je ko u Kristu Anybody that has recognized Jesus Christ as God ko je prepoznao Krista kao Boga Anyone that has understood that they are a sinner before God bilo ko je jednostavno razumeo da je on grešnik pred Bogom They understand that as a sinner I cannot have any kind of relationship with God ko razume da zbog toga što je grešnik ne može da dođe ka Bogu, ne može imati odnos sa Bogom. My sin separates me from God. Da greh odvaja od Boga. And as a sinner, I am deserving of hell and judgment. I kao grešnik ja zaslužujem pakao i kaznu. But anyone who has understood that and seen that Jesus has said, I offer you salvation. I svako ko je razumeo to i video da Isus je rekao nudim vam spasenje Even though you are a sinner i ako ste grešnici as the bible says Jesus came for the ungodly Kao što Biblija kaže Isus je do, došao zbog grešnika He came to save sinners Došao je da spasi grešnike So the sinner that has said okay Jesus I want to receive that salvation that you offer tako da grešnik koji kaže, dođe pred Boga i kaže, ok, Isuse, želim da primim to spasenje. That you took the that I have, uh, da kaže da veruje da sam ti uzeo, ti Isuse, uzeo moju kaznu koju ja zaslužujem. Right? Verujem da si umro u mom mestu, na mom mestu. For the sins that I committed. Za grehe koje sam ja počinio. And in place of that you have offered me eternal life. I za uzvrat dobijem večan život. Here it says that anyone that has done that that is in Christ is a new creation. Kaže da ovdje bilo ko je uradio to, da bilo ko je prihvatio Hrista je novo stvorenje. Right? No, a new creation. Novo stvorenje, nova stvar. Yeah. And that that new creation, what does that mean? A što to znači to novo stvorenje? What does it mean to be a new creation? Što znači biti novo stvorenje u Hristu? Well, many of you maybe remember the um, the nighttime meeting that Jesus had with Nicodemus. Mnogi od vas vjerovatno sećaju ovaj to jedno večer koje Isus proveo proveo sa Nikodemusom. And they had this interesting conversation about being born from above, right? I oni su imali interesantan razgovor u vezi toga što znači biti rođen od dozgo. Uh-huh. Od gore. Above or What does it say in the um, Serbian? Novorodjen, born again, basically. Or again. Again, yeah, born again. again. Okay. So, you were born again. Novorodjen, u vezi novog rođenja. What does that mean, Nicodemus asks? I šta to znači, pita Nicodim? How is it that I, as an old man, can go back into the womb of my mother and be born again? How is that possible? I pitao je, kako je to moguće, Isuse, kako ja star čovjek da ponovo se vratim u majčinu u torbu i kako da se rodim ponovo. And Jesus explains as you all know that the birth that he's speaking about is a, a spiritual birth. Isus mu naravno objašnjava da rođenje o kojemu govori jeste duhovno rođenje. A person from the inside their spirit becomes alive. It is born into being. A duh osobe je taj koji se rodi koji postane nov. Just as everyone here in this room was at one time born, the moment we born, we were born and we breathed air, that life, you know, was there. Kao što su svaki od nas smo se rodili jednog dana, el? i tog trenutka kada smo se rodili, udahnuli smo zrak, vazduh i o, to je to. The same way, the moment we received Christ as Savior, Isto je tako i sa Isusom, kada prihvatimo Isusa kao spasitelja, naš duh postane živ u Hristu. I novo stvorenje je stvoreno u nama. Kaže ovdje da je sve staro nestalo. To je iza nas. I 
has become new. I sve novo postade. So the person that is in Christ, they are new completely. Tako da osoba koja je u Kristu, ona je nova u potpunosti. That means new goals in life. To znači novi ciljevi u životu. There's new things that motivate, you know, new motivating factors in their lives. Nove motivacije u životu. New passions. Nove strasti, želje. And there's also, we understand from the Bible, a new um, rule of life. Yeah? I isto tako piše Biblija, imamo novi uh, zakon života, tako da kažem. Yeah, so there's something new that controls your life that you're submitted to as this new creation. Više kao nova vlast što vas kontroliše, znači no, imamo novu vlast. Da. And it's the spirit of God that has come to dwell in you. A to je duh Boži koji je došao da a, bude u nama. Before it was me, you know. Prije toga bio sam ja. It was self that controlled me. Bili smo mi. And even we understand from the Bible even the devil was involved in that. Mi smo kontrolisali sebe i piše Biblija da je Sotona isto bio taj koji nas je kontrolisao. Sotona i svet nas je kontrolisao i kroz to mi smo uh, na taj način doživljavali život. But when we were born again, ali, kada, we became this new creation, ali kada smo se rodili ponovo i kada smo postali ovo novo stvorenje, imamo novu vlast u životu. And, uh, It's the the rule of the spirit in our lives. I to je vlast duha u našem životu. If you look in Romans chapter 8, ko pogledate u Rimljanima, osmo poglavlje, verse 2, drugi stih, it says um, it's the law, right? Or the rule of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death. Kaže, jer zakon ili vlast duha života u Hristu Isusu oslobodi me od zakona grešnoga i smrti. Right? So this new law, this new fact of the spirit in my life is leading to life. Tako da ovaj novi zakon koji sam dobio u životu me vodi ka životu. But there's this old law also, the law of sin and death that leads to death. Ali postoji zakon smrti i greha koji vodi smrti. When sin is ruling in our lives. To je kada naš kada greh vlada u našem životu. And, you know, we're not going to look at all this, but many of you remember from reading Romans chapter 7. Nećemo pogledati to večeras, ali mnogi od vas se sećaju šta piše u Rimljanima 8. We read about Paul's kind of like depression maybe. <laughs> Čitamo o Paulovoj neki način depresiji. If you read through Romans chapter 7, it's very interesting. You will recognize the words me, I, myself over and over and over again. Ako uh, čitate Rimljanima sedmo poglavlje, prepoznat ćete onako dosta toga da Pavle piše ja, moj, sebe, ne znam. Right? Me, me, or ja, 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 right? Ja, ja. And in the end he says, oh wretched man that I am. I na kraju kaže, o grešni čovek. You know, o ja koji sam grešni čovek. Who's gonna save me? Who's gonna free me from this body of death? Ko će me osloboditi od ovog tela? And of course we know, he says, Thank God through Jesus Christ. I naravno na kraju kaže hvala Bogu Isus Hrist. And then there's this interesting contrast when we look at Romans chapter 8. Imamo taj interesantan kontrast u Rimljanima uh, 8. Instead of reading I, 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 umjesto da čitamo ja, 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 all of a sudden we read the Spirit. We, we, we uh, kind of confront this word spirit 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 over and over again. To se u Rimljanima se zamenjuje sa duhom duhom duhom. Yeah, and we see the two differences. We see a life that is ruled by self. I vidimo um, te dve razlike, vidimo život koji sam sebe kontroliše. Yeah, and it it's just a, a life of death, a life of wretched man that I am. I see no victory in my life. What I do, uh, I don't want to do what I don't want to do. I do to je život jednostavno e, smrtni život, to je život koji je kontrolisan grehom, ono što želim da uradim, a, ne radim, ono što ne želim da uradim, radim. The law of sin and death. To je greh, a, to je zakon greha i smrti. But then we go to chapter 8. Ali onda dolazimo u osmo poglavlje. And we see the spirit, the spirit, the spirit, the spirit and we see victory. I vidimo duh, 
vidimo duh, duh, duh i vidimo pobjedu u životu. The law of the spirit, right, of life in Christ. Zakon duha života u Kristu. spirit is in control, when the spirit is the ruling factor in our lives. Kada je duh u kontroli, kada je duh ta vlast nad našim životom. Both of those are said to be laws, right? Or rules. Oba, laws, yeah. yeah. Uh, oba dva stvari kaže da su zakone. Right? Like we, you can explain it this way. Možemo i na ovaj način da objasnimo. We have the law of gravity. Yeah? Imamo, imamo zakon gravitacije. When we stand up, we all don't float up to the ceiling, right? Kada ustanemo znamo da nećemo odletati do krova. Uh, why? Zašto? Because there's gravity. Zbog toga što postoji gravitacija. It doesn't matter if I'm in the basement. Uh, nije važno da li smo u podrumu. Or on the second floor. Ili da li smo u kafiću gore. Or if I'm in a car. Ili da li smo u autu. This law of gravity, it is, uh, I'm controlled by that law. Ja sam kontrolisan zakonom gravitacije. But what happens if we get in the car? A šta se dogodi ako um, uđemo u auto? To the airport. I uh, vozimo se do aerodroma, on airplane, uh, sednemo u avion and this big piece of metal, yeah, i ovaj ogroman komad metala, heavy, težak komad metala koji je na zemlji. All of a it going down the Odjednom počne da uh, ide po pisti and it to lift off the i počinje da se odmaja, odvaja od zemlje, počinje da leti. Why? Zašto? because you have the law of aerodynamics. Zato što postoji zakon aerodinamike. The law of aerodynamics has freed us from the law of gravity. Zakon aerodinamike nas je oslobodio od zakona gravitacije. There's still the law of gravity, it's still there. Dalje postoji taj zakon gravitacije. But there's a greater law that has freed us from the previous one. Ali postoji veći zakon koji nas je oslobodio od prethodnog. And it's the same way here. I na isti način vidim to je There will always be the law of sin and death. It's a law. It's unchangeable. Uvijek će postojati taj zakon kreha i smrti. To ne možemo promijeniti u večeri. That's why we talk about the flesh. We never say that you can change the flesh. You cannot change yourself. The self. Tako da uvijek kada govorimo o telu, uvijek kažemo ne kažemo možemo promijeniti telo, nego kažemo da ne možemo jer nemoguće uraditi promijeniti sebe. It's carnally minded, you know? Jer naše telo je uh, sekularno. The flesh is enmity against God. Uh, naše telo je u neprijateljstvu sa Bogom. Uh-huh. It's against him. It's fighting against him. Protiv Boga je u borbi sa Bogom. And it will Bogom. always be that way. You cannot change that. I to će tako uvijek biti, to ne možemo promijeniti. That, that's why of course in chapter 6 he says the flesh has to be what? Crucified. Tako da change it. Pao, Pao le kaže isto tako da šta sa telom treba da se uradi, treba da se razapne. Ali svi vidimo taj zakon. Iako smo nova stvorenja, iako smo se nanovo rodili, why do I sin? zašto i dalje grešimo? Why? Zašto? Why do I have that struggle? Zašto imamo a, taj kamac poticanja? Jer to je zbog toga što postoji taj zakon i smrti koji dalje and tu. let me help you understand as believers this is where many of us um, get confused get very discouraged and maybe fall into depression kao vernici ovo je jedan um, ovo je nešto što sa mnogi mi spotičemo i uh, onako dosta smo konfuzni u vezi toga čak i padamo u depresiju zbog toga because we try to change the flesh we start making these rules okay i need to do this and this and this zbog toga što pokušavamo menjati naše telo i napravimo neku svoju neku svoju listu stvari koje trebamo raditi i kažemo moramo raditi ovo 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 we try to make laws for ourselves maybe to keep us from sins pokušavamo napraviti zakon za nas koji bi nas uh, odvojio od greha koji bi nas sklanjao od greha when really the only thing that can free us from that is life in the spirit. Ali kad jedina stvar koja nas može a, osloboditi od toga jeste život u duhu. Or life that is controlled by the spirit. Ili život koji je kontrolisan od strane life duha. Life that is motivated by the spirit that is in us. Život koji je motivisan od strane a duha koji je u nama. Completely submitted to the spirit of God. Život koji je u potpunosti potlačen duhom. There's a good example if you look in uh, Genesis of Isaac. I think he's a good example of a life that is dominated by the flesh. 
u knjizi Postanka imamo priču Isa, koji ja mislim da je on dobar primjer života koji je in the flesh or in the spirit? Flesh. Života koji je pod vlašću tela. Ok. If you look at Genesis chapter 25 Ako pogledamo u knjizi Postanka 25. poglavlje It's interesting we know that God made it clear that to Isaac Interesantno je da Bog je rekao čisto i bistro Isaku that he had chosen um, Jacob over Esau da je on izabrao Jakova preko Isava the older shall serve the younger stari će služiti mladom mlađemu now we know many of you know the story what did Isaac want to do i mnogi od vas znate priču šta je Isak šele uraditi. Who knows? Ko zna? Who did Isaac want to give the, the blessing to and the birthright? Ko me Isak teo dati taj blagoslov i to pravo prvorođen prvorođenčeta? Isa, right? Yeah, he wanted Isa. Teo je Isa dati to. Have you ever thought it what thought it. Have you ever thought why? Jeste li ikad mislili zašto? You ever wondered that? Jeste se nikad pitali zašto? Why did Isaac want to go against God's clear revelation of his choice and choose um Esau? Jeste se nekad pitali zašto je Isak šelio ići protiv Boga, protiv njegovog iz njegovog izbora koji je rekao Isaku da on želi zapravo Isava? Do you know why? Znate zašto? Because there was something controlling him što, and it wasn't God's spirit. Zato što je poslao nešto što ga je kontrolisalo, to što ga je kontrolisalo nije bio duh, nego je bilo njegovo Look telo. Verse, uh, 28 of chapter 25. Pogledajte, znači 25. 28. stih kaže Isak je više voleo Isava jer rado jedeše lova njegova, a Rebeka je više volila Jakova. What does it say? Šta kaže? Who did Isaac love? Koga je Isak voleo? Who? Yeah. Isava. He loved Isa. Voleo Isava. Why? Zašto? It says it right there. Why did he love Isa? Piše ovdje zašto. I think it's right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Zato što je voleo hranu. He was Kyrgyz. Bio je iz Kirgistana, verovatno. Yeah, the Kyrgyz love meat. Well, I'm sure Serbians probably like meat too. Kirgistanci vole ovaj, kao i Srbi, manje više meso. Serbians, do Serbians like meat? Volimo meso, volimo. Maybe he was Serbian then, I don't know. Možda je bio Srbin, onda. I love meat, maybe he was American. Ja volim isto meso, ja sam Amerikanac, tako da. He loved Isa because he ate of his game. A voleo je Isava zbog toga što je rado jeo od njegovog lova. What's the big deal? What's so bad about that? A šta je lošo u vezi toga? Is it a sin to love meat? Je li greh voleti meso? No. Naravno da nije. No. But if that causes you to go against what God has said, then that is controlling your life. Ali ako je to problem da idete ako je to nešto zbog čega idete proti Božje volje, onda, um, ako je to nešto što, želite da ide, što vas tera da idete proti Božje volje, onda treba da to sasečete. I Isak je voleo Isava. Isak je voleo Isava iz telesnih razloga. Ne piše da je Isak voleo Isava zbog toga što je on bio pobožan čovek. He was a man submitted to God because he was a man committed to God's command. Zbog toga što je bio čovek koji je bio pod Bogom, koji je bio koji je držao Božje zapovesti. He loved him because he ate of his game. Ne, nego piše da je voleo zbog toga što je jeo hranu koju on spremao. That was pleasant, that was appealing to his flesh. Razlog je bio nešto što je mu bilo ugodno telu. And we read further on if you look in chapter 27 i dalje u 27. pogledu čitamo nešto interesantno. Verse 4. Yeah, chapter 27, verse 4. 27. pogledu, četvrti sih, kaže, izgotovi 
zgotovi mi jelo po mojoj volji i donesi mi da jedem, pa da te blagoslovi duša moja dok nisam umro. Make me savory food such as I love. Zgotovi mi jelo po mojoj volji. And that my soul will be glad and I'll bless you, right? I donesi mi je pa da te blagoslovi duša moja. Interesting. Interesantno. Make me that thing that I love. Napravi mi ono što ja volim. And then I will do what really I shouldn't do. I onda ću raditi ono što ne bi zapravo trebao raditi. This was something that controlled him. To je bilo nešto što ga je kontrolisalo. If we read further on in chapter 27. Ako dalje čitamo u 27. poglavlju. Um verses 20 through 23. Znači 27 pogleda 20 do 23. stih. Kažem, a Isak reče sinu svom, kad brže nađe sine? A on reče, gospod Bog tvoj, dade te izađi predame. Tada reče Isak Jakovu, hodi bliže sine, da te opipam, jesi li sin moj Isav ili ne? I pristupi Jakov Isaku ocu svom, a on ga opipavši, pa reče, glas je Jakovljev, ali ruke su Isakove. I ne pozna ga, jer mu ruke behu, kao u Isava, brata njegova dlakave, zato ga blagoslovi. I find it interesting that uh, if you know we look at this, Isaac is so reliant on his self, on his self, you know, life. On, ono što mi je interesantno i što vidim iz ovoga da je Isak se toliko oslanja na sebe, na njegov život. That he calls Jacob. On uh, zove Jakova. And what does he do? I šta radi? He asks, you know, come near that I may feel you. Kaže dođi ovdje da te opipam. You know his sense of feeling. Oslanja se na dodir na na čulu dodira. Come and he wants to smell him. I želi da ga omiriše isto. It's interesting. He recognizes. He says the voice, right? He's hearing the voice is the voice of Jacob's. I kaže prepoznaje da je glas Jakovu glas. But the smell and the feel is that of Esau. Ali miris. Ali znači njegov njegovo to njegov glas i njegove sam se ja zbunio njegov miris i njegov kako osjeća to jest njegova građa je bila Jakov je znači bio glas but the smell and the feel was Esau's ali Isao je bio mirisi, znači, ta građa, tako da kažem. As we read here, Jacob was deceiving him. Tako da vidimo ovdje da Jakob je zapravo prevario. But the self-life, they depend, they trust in the fleshly senses. Vidimo da Isak ovdje jednostavno se oslanje na svoja telesna čula. Have you ever been deceived by your feelings? Da li su vas vaše, vaše osjećanje nekad zavarala? Have you? I think all of us have. Mislim da smo svi jednom bili ili više puta. There's been times where I have felt like doing something that I know is wrong. Postojalo su vremena kada sam želeo uraditi nešto što sam znao da je pogrešno. But my feeling says do it, it's right. Moje osjećanje govori uradi to, to je okej. Okay. There have been times where my feelings have said, "If you do this, you will be happy." Nekada su mi osjećanja govorila, "Ako uradiš, bit ćeš srećan." But I know, if I do it, I will not be happy. Ali znao sam da ako to uradim, neću biti srećan. You know, these the these senses of our flesh are deceiving. Čula našeg tela jednostavno zavaraju nas. And when we're ruled by the flesh, we will be led astray by those things. Kada smo kontrolisani od strane tela, we will be what? Led astray, right, by those things. To će nas odvesti na pogrešnu stranu. It's interesting, I think, that the Bible talks so much about hearing. Interesantno je meni da Biblija toliko govori o slušanju. You know, Jesus often said that when he was teaching, he would say, those who have an ear to hear, let him hear. Isus je često to govorio dok je učio, rekao je, ko ima uvo, neka čuje. U Rimljanima piše da vera dođe slušanjem. Vera dolazi slušanjem, kaže Rimljanima. 
И како читамо Свето Писмо, Бог ще нама говорити. Али то е едино чуло кое Исак не е веровал в том чуло. И не желаем да оно направим превише духовно на том притчу о Исаку. Ал я верувам да Стари Завет најбоље презентува истина Новог Завета. И ја мислам да е тоа најбоља илустрација човек кој е покренут од страна тела, кој е контролисан од страна тела и шта е плод кој е довел, кој е Исак донел. His sons hated each other. Njegovi sinovi su mrzeli sebe međusobno. We don't really read much about what their relationship was, Isaac and Rebecca's. I'm sure it wasn't that good because they loved different sons. Ne piše mnogo o vezi između Isaka i Rebeke. Možda je bila dobra zbog toga, ali kaže da su volili različite sinove. We know that because of this exact sin, Zbog ove situacije, Jakov je 21 godinu morao da beži. Isak nije vidio svog sina. Kada smo kontrolisani telom i kada sledimo telo, rezultati uvek će biti loši. Neće imati efekta samo na nas, već na ljude oko nas. Život koji je kontrolisan telom čini ljude jednostavno mizernim, ali isto tako i ljude oko njih mizernim. Mislim da to u crkvi nekad zaboravljamo. A crkva nije samo o meni. To je samo u vezi mene, to je zbog toga što ja idem u crkvu, to je u vezi mog odnosa sa Bogom. Crkva je u stvari u vezi zajednice. Kada dođete u crkvu, možete biti ohrabrenje ili obeshrabrenje bratu ili sestri. I u zavisnosti da li je naš život pod kontrolom duha ili tela, možemo biti blagoslov ili prokletstvo crkvi. Ima efekta na nas, ima efekta na ljude oko nas. Nemojte se zavaravati u vezi toga. Iako jeste, mi smo nova stvorenja. I ništa ne može promijeniti tu činjenicu da kada dođemo kod Isusa, mi smo novi ljudi. I mnogi vjernici imaju problema sa tim godinama, možda čak i ceo život. Ne znači da je lao da je da taj zakon duha, kada smo kontrolisani zakonom duha, kada ima motivacije duha, da to nas oslobađa od zakona smrti i greha. Ok, but what I want to look at today ono što želim pogledati večeras je 
želim da pogledam dve stvari ili dva ploda osobe koja hoda u duhu, koja je znači rođena na novu. So the person that is uh, being controlled by the spirit Dakle, osoba koja je kontrolisana duhom. Verujem da postoji dve stvari koje motivišu tu osobu u životu. I to možemo vidjeti ovdje u drugim Korinčanima, peto poglavlje. U prvom poglavlju četiri poglavlju, Paul je učinio o faktu da You know, his body is dying. A u prvom delu petog poglavlja Paul da govori o svom telu koje umire. Do you know, who knows at what age we reach our peak, right? A da li neko vas uzna uh, koja je godina našeg života kada um, dođemo do, um, kao, koje su naj, najbolje godine ili tako nešto? What do you think? How old? 30. 30. 20 maybe? Do you know at age 15 godina 15. godina more cells die in our body than are produced new cells are produced uh, um, sorry new cells yeah more cells die okay. than are produced to replace them in our okay. body okay uh, znači u 15. godini više ćelija umre nego što su uh, se rode nove ćelije u našem telu. Right, the cells. So really, 15 is it. Tako da 15. godina to se dešava tada. That's when we are like peaked out, you know. To je znači kao ono najbolje. Yeah, we're after that you still grow, become maybe stronger in some ways, but your body is slowly dying. Znači, to je ta godina kada, znači, mislim, posle toga isto rastemo, možemo biti snažni, ali vaše telo počinje umirati. Sa 15 godina možda to ne vidimo, vidimo možda onako jačamo i tako to. But, you know, sometimes we, it's not until we're like maybe 30 or 40 or 50 that we realize that we're kind of becoming weaker. Ali u 30. i 40. godini tek onda primećujemo da onako postajemo slabi. Neki od nas moraju nositi na oče zbog toga što naše oči umiru. Moramo promeniti našu frizuru zbog toga što naša kosa otpada. Ja sam prije imao mnogo više kose nego sada. But I think my kids are guilty of me losing all my hair. Mali krim, decu zbog toga. But we're dying slowly. That's a fact. Ali umiremo polako i to je činjenica. Okay, ten out of ten people die. Deset od deset ljudi umiru. Right, we all die. Svi umiremo. Who do you know that has been able to escape life or death? Jel znate nekoga ko je uspeo da izbegne smrt? The smartest people of history have never been able to outsmart death. Ni najpametniji ljudi nisu mogli da uh, da tako da kažem nadmudre um, smrt. Yeah. The richest people have never been able to buy a ticket so they didn't have to die. Najbogatiji ljudi nisu uspeli da kupe kartu tako da ne umru. The most religious people have never been good enough not to die. Sorry, what the most? Religious, right? Or the best, the, the good people. Najreligiozni, najbolji ljudi nisu mogli da ne umru. We all die. Svi umiremo. And this fact, you know, sometimes it's scary for some people. I ova činjenica neka je zastrašujuća za neke ljude. You know, but in verse 9, Paul says that because of that, he has something that motivates him. Ali Paolo kaže u devetom stihu da zbog toga ima nešto što ga motiviše. He says, well, verse 9, you can read verse 9. Mm-hmm. And verse 9 and 10, go ahead. Devet i deseti stih kaže, zato se i rado trudimo, bilo da boravimo ovdje, bilo da odlazimo, da budemo njemu ugodni. Jer nam se svima valja javiti na sudu Hristovom da primi svaki ono što je u telu učini, bilo dobro ili zlo. Yeah, so we... And make it our aim to be pleasing to the Lord. 
treba da bude to naš cilj da budemo ugodni gospodu each one of us here will stand before god one day svako od nas ovde će jednom stati pred boga maybe it will be sooner than we think Možda će biti prije nego što mislimo. Možda će biti kasnije nego što mislimo. Isak je mislio da umire, a na kraju je još živio još 40 godina nakon onog incidenta. Ali kaže ovdje, znači da ćemo se svi javiti na sudu Hristovom. Znači je interesno da je učin o believers ovdje, right? Interesantno je to da on ovde Pavle piše vernicima u Korintu. Da li nama vernicima postoji strah u smrti? Ne bih rekao. Ja se ne bojim smrti. Zato što smrt za nas će biti večan život. Smrt je da Smrt su vrata koje nam otvaraju večnost. Kad ćemo konačno biti oslobođeni tog smrtnog tela. I Paul zna par stvari u vezi tog suda Hristovog gde ćemo primiti svaki ono što je u telu učinio, bilo dobro ili zlo. Although we will not Iako nećemo vidjeti pakao i Boži gnev, mi, vernici, koji verujemo u Hrista, ali bit ćemo odgovorni na način na koji živimo. Biblija kaže da nas je Bog kupio za određenu cenu. I zbog toga što smo mi Boži, naš život više nije naš. Tako da kažem, mi živimo pozajemljenim životom. I kada stanem pred Boga, ja ću mu morati reći zašto sam živeo na ovoj način i zašto sam mu radio ono ili ovo. I dakle, postoji ta neka određena određena količina onoga što mi zovemo sraha Božjega. Određena količina znanja da znamo da je naš život Boži. I can go and do whatever I want I istina je da možemo uraditi, ići uraditi šta hoćemo, ali to ne znači da je to ugodno Bogu. I to treba biti neka motivacija u našem životu, taj strah Boži. Ja ću biti odgovoran za način na koji sam živeo. Did I use my life for God's glory to further His kingdom da li sam koristio svoj život za Božju i slavu i za njegovo carstvo ili sam koristio svoj život za sebe Isus je rekao ja uvek radim ono što je ugodno mojom ocu rekao je došao sam da ispunim volju moga oca Isus je bio pod vlašću Božijom, potlačen Bogom, podređen Bogom. Tako da to mi razumemo, da ćemo biti jednog dana pred Bogom. I možda nećemo pročitati te stihove, ali stihovi od 11 do 13. Pa ovdje govori, više se ne bojimo ljudi, već se bojimo Boga. Mnogi ljudi 
strahuju od tog od ljudi od njihovog mišljenja. What are they going to say? Šta će reći? What are they going to think? Šta će misliti? Well, the spirit or the person that is controlled by the spirit has one question. Ali osoba koja je kontrolisana duhom ima samo jedno pitanje. What is God going to say? Šta će Bog reći? It doesn't matter what he says. Nema veze šta on kaže. My family says. Šta moja porodica kaže. What my friends say. Šta moji prijatelji kažu. Yeah, it might be unpleasant, it might be painful, it might be hurtful for a while. Možda ne bude ugodno, možda bude bolno na neko vreme. But much more important is what will God say, you know? Ali najvažnije je šta šta će Bog reći. You know, in Kyrgyzstan it's a Muslim country, right? Kyrgyzstan to je muslimanska zemlja. So when a Kyrgyz makes a decision to become a Christian, tako da Kyrgyzstanac donese odluku da postane hrišćanin, very very difficult. To je vrlo teško. Maybe it's like that here as well in some ways. I remember in Ukraine if you decided to leave the Orthodox Church, it was a very serious decision. Yeah? Možda je ovdje slično, ali recimo u Ukrajini znam da ako si zaželeo da napustiš pravoslavnu crkvu, right? to bi bila vrlo velika odluka, vrlo teška odluka. Right? Jer gledaju uh, ljude kao kult, gledaju kao sektu. Many Kyrgyz, they do not receive Jesus because for fear of people. I mnogi kirgistanci se odluče da uh, ne prime Hrista zbog njihovog strahovanja od ljudi. Uh, strah ih je, boje se onoga što će ljudi reći, šta će uraditi. Neki kirgistanci koji su postali hrišćani, oni kriju svoju veru. I ne žele da njihova porodica sazna da su oni hrišćani. Ne žele da njihovi bližnji saznaju da oni slede Hrista. Nego onome koji za njih umre i vaskrse. So this motivating factor of love of living for God. Ta motivacija da živimo za Boga je ljubav. It's knowing, well, yeah, so the new creation, right? Remember, this is the new creation. Govorimo novorođenom. The person that is being controlled by the spirit as we read in Romans 8. Novo stvorenje osoba koja je kontrolisana od strane duha. The motivating factor in his life will be love. A motivacija, taj motivacioni faktor u njegovom životu će biti ljubav. Dva značenja. It can mean to restrain. Re- restrain, like uh, može značiti kao odvojiti, držati odvojenim. It's like uh, the horse, right, with the bridle, yeah? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. The thing in his mouth. Cool. Mm-hmm. Zauzdati je to možda zauzdati. It's called the uzda. So, and uh, what does the bridle do? I šta te uzde rade? It constrains, right? Zauzdaju. It leads. It, yeah? Uh, vodi. Like, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. It drives, yeah? Yeah, so it's the thing that controls the horse, right? The, the bridle. To je stvar koja um, kontroliše konja. Uzdete. Naravno, osoba je koristi za kontrolisanje konja. Nešto što nas zauzdava, što nas navodi, direkt, navodi. But it also means to um, compel. Pa <laughs> Budit, like, uh, pobuždat. Pobudit, sorry, pobudit, ne pobuždat, pobudit. Pobudit. Uh, like, um, voditi, to lead? Not to lead, it's like to... Uh, Na voditi. To compel, yeah? Like, uh, how do you explain it? Na voditi is good. It's like, uh, yeah, that's a good yeah, one. Yeah, I think it is. Okay. Na voditi. Navodi. All right. Sorry, I don't know Serbian. Forgive me. Um, so love, what does it do? 
Tako da šta ta ljubav radi? It's love that restrains us at times. Ljubav koja a, zauzdava. It's ne... love that guides us, right? Ali ljubav koja nas vodi. It's love that compels us. It it motivates us to do something. Ljubav koja nas koja nas navodi, koja nas a, what's the other motivate us da yeah. radimo. It's, it motivates us. Motiviše nas. So this life that is in the spirit, it's motivated by love. Tako da život koji je u duhu, to je život koji je motivisan. Just uh, like he says here. Kao što ovdje kaže Pavle. You know, if you think about it, what it was it that motivated God to come and save us sinners? Razmislite šta je to bilo što je motivisalo Boga da dođe i da spasi nas krešnike? Love, right? Ljubav. For God so loved the world. Jer Bog je tako voleo svet. That he gave his son, right? Da je dao svog sina. My oldest son, Titus, asked me an interesting question several months ago. Ma, moj um, najstari sin, Titus, on me pitao... He, he didn't ask me a question, I asked him a question, he had an interesting answer. Ja sam ga pitao pitanje, na koje on imao interesantan odgovor. I asked him, I said, how do you know that God loves you? Pitao sam ga, zašto misliš da te Bog voli? Kako znaš da te Bog voli? How would you answer that question? Kako biste vi odgovorili na to pitanje? You know, the kind of the answers that I expected from Titus. Odgovori koje sam od, od, um, očekivao od svog sina. Well, I have good parents, right? I have food, I have a house, I have nice friends. Those are maybe the right the answers you would expect. That, yeah. that was the answer I was expecting. Jeste kao na primjer zbog toga što imam dobre roditelje, zbog toga što imam hranu, zbog toga što imam najbolje prijatelje. Right? To je odgovor koji sam ja očekivao od njega. Well, on je malo razmislio o tome. And he said, Papa, I know that God loves me because Jesus died on the cross. Ali on mi je rekao, tata, ja znam da me Bog voli zbog toga što je Isus umro na krstu. You know what's interesting? If Zna... you look through the New Testament, I would encourage you to do this. Ohrabrujem vas da pogledate u Starom Zavetu, the u Novom Zavetu. The only time it implicitly says, right, that God loves us, uh, jedino, jedino mesto gdje piše da nas Bog voli onako. The only time it says how God demonstrates his love for us. Yeah. Jedino mesto gdje piše da kako je Bog demonstrirao tu ljubav nama. It's always in reference to Jesus' death for us. Um, to je uvek nekako ukazuje na tu smrt Isusa za nas. Do we always have the food that we want? Da li uvek imamo hranu koju želimo da jedemo? No. Ne. Do we always have good parents? Da li uvek imamo dobre roditelje? No. Ne. Do we always have friends? Da li no, uvek imamo... Like, sometimes it doesn't happen, right? You understand? Yeah, yeah. Da li nekad imamo dobre prijatelje? Those things, circumstances change. Naše okruženje, naše stu... naše okruženje jednostavno se menja. Right? Protection, God's protection of us, that people understand that differently. A neki ljudi razumeju Božju zaštitu na različite načine. What happens when our wife or our husband dies in a car accident, when our children die from some sickness? Šta, šta je onda kada a, naš supružnik ili supruga umru u automobilskoj nesreći ili kada naše dete umre od neke bolesti? We could look at that and say, God doesn't love me. Mi možemo pogledati na te stvari i reći Bog nas ne voli. But understand the Bible always says we have to look at the cross and that is how we know that God loves us. Ali Biblija uvek kaže da mi moramo uvek pogledati na krst jer je to uh, toliko nas Bog voli, to je Božja ljubav. Again, the spirit, the life that is ruled by the spirit and the flesh, my feelings will tell me often God doesn't love you. Život koji je kontrolisan smrću, život koji je u smrti i grehu, um, koji, um, on će, taj život govori, Bog me ne voli. You see, there's a difference there. Postoji razlika tamo. So, anyways, this life that's ruled by the Spirit, I know that I'm going a little bit longer, I'll wrap it up here in a second. No, da ćemo uskoro završiti. It's because Danny is taking a long time to translate. To je zbog toga što meni treba jako puno vremena da prevedem. It's Danny's fault. <laughs> Moja greška. <laughs> Just joking. Sorry. I have to make fun of Danny, you know. Moram se zafrkavati sa Danijem. He wants to marry my sister, so... Hoće da oženi moju sestru, tako. 
I have to get back at him somehow. <laughs> you know what I believe, and I'm sure you've heard of this before, but the greatest evidence of the Spirit ruling our lives is going to be love, right? Um, uh, možda se već ovo čuli, ali uh, najveći uh, the greatest sorry, what? evidence. Najveći dokaz da naš život, that our life, that our life is controlled by the Spirit. Da je naš život kontrolisan duhom je se ljubav. Right? Because the fruit of the Spirit is love. Jer plod duha je ljubav. It will be love for God. Ljubav prema Bogu. And it will be love for people. I ljubav prema ljudima. Right? Not just love for God. Ne samo ljubav ka Bogu za Boga. I know lots and lots of Christians that say, oh, I love God. Znam mnogo, mnogo hrišćana koji kaže, oh, ja volim Boga. But they do not love people. Ali ne vole ljude. John the apostle says that that person's a liar. Apostol Jovan kaže ta osoba je lažov koji to kaže. You say that you love God and hate your brother then you're a liar. Ako kažeš da voliš Boga, mrziš brata, ti si lažov. You know? Okay, that's a real like heart check for us, right? To je onako dobar test za nas. Because sometimes I feel like hating people. Jer ja nekad onako želim Sometimes people are mean and I just want to hate them. A nekad želim udariti ljude, but neke želim mrzeti zbog toga right? što su ljudi loši prema meni. That love that is without condition, that just loves for no reason. That is only God's love. Ali Božja agape ljubav, uh, ona je ta ljubav koja voli ljude. Right? Unconditional, undeserved. Uh, to je nezaslužena ljubav i ljubav bez, uh, bezuslovna ljubav. Yeah, bezuslovna. Yeah, mm. it's just you love just because samo jednostavno zbog toga not because that person is nice ne zbog toga što je ta osoba dobra ne zbog toga što je ta osoba uradila nešto dobro za tebe i želiš ga voliti zbog toga god's love in you right nego zbog te božje ljubavi u tebi and that's you know what i was talking about the muslims right in kyrgyzstan i govorio sam o muslimanima u kirgistanu and they can be very difficult to reach i evo zna biti jako teško my experience has been you know I've lived in Europe I lived in Eastern Europe I've lived in Central Asia I've lived in America imam neko iskustvo živeo sam u zapadnoj Evropi u istočnoj Evropi u Americi u Aziji my experience has been it can be difficult to reach people anywhere shvatio sam da je teško dosegnuti ljude bilo gde sometimes we think Muslims are the hardest nekad mislimo najteže dosegnuti muslimane you know what I found that love can reach anybody. They Ali, really can. Saznao sam da ljubav može dosegnuti bilo koga. Do you know the number one reason why Muslims become Christians? Znate li koji je a, najveći razlog zbog čega muslimani postanu hrišćani? Some people say it's visions. Neki ljudi kažu to su vizije. We have many Muslims in our church that became Christians because they saw Jesus Christ in a dream. U našoj crkvi imamo mnoge hrišćane koji kažu da su videli u snu viziju Isusa Hrista. Znam da se to događa onako često u Kirgistan. Ali to nije razlog. God's love. Najveći razlog zašto hri, zašto muslimani postanu hrišćani jeste kad vide tu uh, ljubav hrišćana, ljubav Božju. That is what is going to change your family, your city, your country, the world. That is what's going to reach them is God's love in us compelling us, right? Motivating us. To je ono što će um, dosegnuti, to će ono što će privući našu uh, familiju, naš grad, našu zemlju, ceo svet. To je ta Božja ljubav. Jer ljudi to ne razumeju. Ono, zašto, zašto vi ljudi vole, a, vole ljude koji ne zaslužuju možda ljubav? Mi to možda nekad ne razumemo jer to nije ljudska ljubav nego je Božja ljubav. And like I said, that happens when the spirit is controlling us. I to se događa kada nas duh kontroliše. We have one guy in our church, his name is Ravil. A imamo jednog momka u našoj crkvi, zove se Ravil. We had a church conference back in September. We just we get together for a few days, we spend time in the word. 
loving each other, you know, praying. Imali smo konferenciju u septembru, imali smo časove, zajedništvo, jeli smo. Hrišćani su, dobro jedu. And you know what? He got filled with the Spirit. This, he, it was just that time where God filled him with His Spirit. I u životu tog momka to je bilo vreme kada ga je Bog ispunio svojim duhom. And he is, his nationality is Dungan, right? I njegova nacionalnost je Dungan. I don't know if you've heard of the Dungan before. Ne znam da li ste čuli nekad za Dungan. But they live in Central Asia. Ali oni žive u centralnoj Aziji. And there's not a lot of them left. There's, I think. In Central Asia, like around 100,000 that live in Central Asia. I mislim da postoji oko 100,000 njih koji žive u centralnoj Aziji. And out of the 100,000 Dungan, they know, they, I mean, estimate that there are 30 that are Christians. I od tih 100,000 Dunganovaca, misle da postoji, znači, otprilike samo 30 njih su hrišćani. They are a people that are very close to the gospel. Oni su ljudi koji su vrlo zatvoreni za evanđelje. Jako je teško desegnuti ih. I ovaj momak, on je poverovao je prije par godina i ispunjen je duhom sada. I'm just so encouraged watching his life because he just wants to see people get saved. He wants everybody to be saved, but especially his people, the Dungan. I tako sam ohrabren njegovim životom jer želi da svi ljudi spasu, a pogotovo ima srce za tu svoju naciju, Dungan. He sings on our worship team. He's like a professional singer, you know. He finished the conservatory. Profesionalni pevač, završio znači te studije i peva na našem timu za slavnje. And right now he's writing music, you know, in Dungan, in his own Dungan language. I trenutno piše pesme na tom jeziku Dungana. He, as far as we know, those are the only songs that exist in Dungan that speak about Jesus, that are praises to God. I koliko mi znamo, to su jedine pesme koje na tom jeziku, Dungan jeziku, koje govore o Bogu, koje govore o Isusu. But he wants to do this, right, so to reach his people. Ali on to želi da dosegne svoje ljude. To radi da bi dosegnuo svoje ljude. I ono što me intrigira jeste što mi možemo reći njemu ti trebaš da ideš da dosegneš Dungan. Možemo mu reći moraš to raditi, to je hrišćanski, zašto to ne radiš? Možemo ga natrati da osjeća krivicu u vezi toga. But he is just so filled with love. Ali on je toliko ispunjen ljubavlju. And that love is so motivating him. I ta ljubav je ga toliko motivira. It encourages me to pray more for love in my life, you know. Mene ohrabruje da ja molim za više ljubavi u svom životu. I would be willing to say that everything that we struggle with in our lives is Christian. Sorry? Everything that we struggle with. Sve sa čim imamo problema, sa čim se spotičemo u životu. Sve što bi trebali raditi kao hrišćani. Ako bi bili ispunjeni ljubavlju, to bi se događalo, to bi radili. Isus je rekao, voli Boga, voli svoga bližnjeg. Kako se to dogodi? To je da je biti ispunjeni s Spiritom. Tako što smo ispunjeni duhom, kontrolisani duhom, podređeni smo, naš život je podređen duhom. Da se molimo za kraj. Gospode, hvala ti za tvoj duh. Hvala ti što je tvoj duh živ u nama. We thank you that we are new creations in Christ. Hvati što smo nova stvorenja u Isusu. Thank you that you have made us new. Hvati što si nas obnovio. Lord, we don't have to think about all the junk that was in our lives in the past, how we lived before, all the terrible things we did. Hvati što ne moramo razmišljati o tom svom smeću u našem životu, kako smo živjeli. It's all in the past and everything's been made new. Jer to je sve prošlosti, sve je novo nastalo. And God, we want to walk in that newness of life. I Bože, želimo hodati u toj novini života. That life that is, Lord, lived in, Lord, fear of you. 
životu koji je koji je život u stvari u strahu od tebe and the life that is motivated motivated by love i životu koji je motivisan od strane ljubavi by your love tvojom ljubavi so lord i just pray for us here now molim te bože sada za sve nas ovde pray you fill us with your spirit molim te da nas ispuniš duhom i pray that we would submit our lives to your spirit Molim te da podredimo naš živote tvom duhu. Lord bless this church. Molim te blagoslovi ovu crkvu. Use this church to reach people for you. Koristi ovu crkvu da dosegne ljude za tebe. Use this church to reach this city, this country, Lord. Koristi ovu crkvu da dosegne ovaj grad i ovu zemlju. Those things that are impossible for us are possible with you. Ono što je nemoguće nama je moguće za tobom Bože. So Lord, we pray that you do the impossible. I molimo te da uradiš nemoguće. In Jesus name. U Isusovo ime. Amen. Amen. Thank you for your time, your attention. Hvala na vašem vremenu i vašoj pažnji. God bless you guys. Bog da vas blagoslovi.